it does occasionally get to the point where I'm a little bit worried about it and I just want to wrap it in a cold towel and tell it everything is going to be okay. <laughs> is that weird? I don't care. Back in October of 2020, I sold both my iMac and my 13 inch MacBook Pro, both of which I was using at the time. And the idea behind that was to replace them with one computer, the MacBook Pro 16 inch. It's a beast of a laptop. It meant I only had one computer that did absolutely everything. I could edit all my videos off it. I could do all my work and my uni assignments on there. I could watch stuff. I could do literally everything with one computer. I do a lot of video editing, obviously, I make all of these videos for my YouTube channel as well and that is why I sold both my previous Macs to replace them with this 16 inch MacBook Pro and this has entirely sped up my entire workflow. Editing 4K footage, it flies through it completely differently to how my 13 inch MacBook Pro and iMac did. It smashes both of them out of the park and export times are just insanely quick compared to those. However, literally two or three weeks after buying this 16 inch MacBook Pro, Apple released their new line of M1 MacBooks which are completely blowing everything out of the park and rewriting what is possible with computers. So six or seven months later, do I regret buying the 16 inch MacBook Pro instead of waiting for an M1 Mac? Let's get into it. Now very quickly, just before we go any further, if you wouldn't mind giving this video a thumbs up and clicking the subscribe button as it really does help out with the channel and this channel is growing quite quickly at the moment, so it's quite exciting. So yeah, if you could do that, it would be massively appreciated. So let's look at the reasons that I don't regret buying the MacBook Pro and then a little bit later on, we'll look at the reasons that I do regret buying it and not waiting for an M1 MacBook. The first reason I don't regret buying it is, as I mentioned before, it is the most powerful laptop I have ever used. As I mentioned before, it really has sped up my entire workflow with everything creative, whether that's editing video in Final Cut, editing photos in Lightroom and Photoshop, it doesn't matter. It is so much more powerful than anything I have ever used before. And for a baseline model, which again, this is the very cheapest 16 inch MacBook Pro, it really is a workhorse. It does everything that you throw at it. And yes, even though the new M1 MacBooks are massively impressive and can even maybe sometimes do things a little bit better than the 16 inch MacBook Pro, like for example rendering a video a few seconds quicker. I don't see that as a massive advantage to go with an M1 over the 16 inch MacBook Pro because a few seconds here or there when you're editing a video is not going to make a huge difference overall. The second reason is USB-C ports. Now this is a huge part of the argument when it comes to choosing which MacBook to buy because at the moment this might change very soon with the release of the new 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pros apparently, but at the moment we only have USB-C ports, which kind of limits what you can plug into it without using dongles. So by having more, the MacBook Pro 16 inch has four of these ports, you have the ability to plug in more dongles and to be able to connect even more devices. The M1 Max at the moment, there is only the MacBook Air and MacBook Pro, as well as the Mac Mini, but they only have two USB-C ports. Now that is massively going to limit what you can plug into your MacBook because by the time you have your power adapter and an external drive plugged into it, you have already used up both of your ports. With the MacBook Pro 16 inch, because you have four, you have the ability to plug an adapter, power adapter, a hard drive, and then I use, let me grab it, I use this, so it means I can plug it into the other two USB-C ports on my MacBook, and it gives me two more normal USB-A ports and two USB-C ports, so it effectively doubles what you can plug into it. Yes, you can use that with a 13-inch MacBook Pro, but again, you're gonna run out of ports a lot quicker. So overall, the more USB-C ports you have access to, the better, as it gives you far more freedom to be able to plug in the things that you need to plug in. That being said though, apparently the new 14 and 16-inch MacBooks that are gonna be released whoever knows when in the next few months maybe, apparently they're gonna have even SD card slots put back into them. I think that is one thing that I really do miss about these MacBooks is having an SD card slot. Because having to use this to plug in your SD card 
if you forget that when you're out traveling, you can't plug your SD card in. So just to be able to plug it straight into the laptop, that is the one thing that I don't like about these ports on the MacBooks. But anyway, yeah, the more ports you have access to, the better. The M1s only have two ports. The third reason is the bigger display. Now at the moment, the only M1 MacBooks that are out have a 13 inch display. This is a 16 inch display, so you're getting three inches more screen space. And for me, when you are video editing, that makes a huge difference. If you've not got it plugged into an external monitor and you're out and about editing, maybe you're sat in a coffee shop doing some work, being able to have that little bit bigger screen space really does make a huge difference and that is something that I'm willing to sacrifice for portability, just being able to use that little bit more screen whilst you are out and about makes a huge difference and that's something that I'm willing to compromise on for portability. And the fourth reason is it does absolutely everything that I throw at it. It has never let me down once, it is an absolute beast. Yes, it might slow down a little bit while you are editing a large 4K Final Cut project, for example, but as soon as you let it render and it catches up with itself, it is just back to normal and you can fly through your work. So yes, it might slow down occasionally, but it is hugely, hugely powerful. So now let's get onto some reasons as to why I regret buying this 16 inch MacBook instead of waiting for the M1s to be released when I did buy it. And there are three main reasons. The first reason is the cost. Now this is slightly depressing. The 16 inch MacBook Pro is a very expensive laptop, like very expensive. This is the base model of the 16 inch as I mentioned before and it costs about £2,400 when I bought it back in October. Now the M1 Macs that were released just a few weeks after I bought this 16 inch MacBook Pro are just as capable in a lot of ways and a hell of a lot cheaper. The Mac Mini for example starts at £699. £699 that's less than half the you could buy four of those Mac Minis for the price of one of these and it can almost pretty much keep up with this. That is just ridiculous. Yes, you might have to buy an external monitor and a keyboard and a mouse for it if you've not got them already, but if you have £699 for a computer that powerful, it's just insane. It's ridiculous. So yeah, slightly depressing how expensive this is just a few weeks before that was released. Now the second reason I regret not waiting for an M1 Mac is the heat that the 16 inch produces. I mean, this gets insanely hot. It's like a sauna in here when you're editing. I mean, not that hot, but you know what I'm trying to say? It's ridiculous the amount of heat this produces. It does occasionally get to the point where I'm a little bit worried about it and I just wanna wrap it in a cold towel and tell it everything is gonna be okay. <laughs> is that weird? I don't care. You know what I'm trying to say, it gets hot. But the M1 Max do not produce any heat at all. It's insane. You can put it through the same workload, even more, and the fan will just not kick in. And that brings me on to point number three, and that is the noise. The noise of the 16 inch MacBook Pro. It sounds like it's gonna take off. It is insanely loud. When it heats up, the fans kick in and it doesn't take long and it's so off-putting when you are trying to edit a video. Maybe you're trying to edit sound or music or put in some sound design in a video. If you're not got headphones in, then it's really off-putting to be able to create anything with this laptop sound-wise. And again, the M1 Max, you don't ever hear the fan. I don't know how that's possible. The MacBook Air M1 doesn't even have a fan in it. That is just insane. How it can do that without a fan is incredible and again they're almost as powerful as this so yeah there's a few reasons as to why i do regret getting the 16 inch over waiting for an m1 so should you choose the macbook pro 16 inch or an m1 mac it depends what you're going to be using it for. I think the best thing to do overall is to lay out the list of positives and negatives in front of you and decide which is going to suit best for your needs of what you need it for. Are you going to be editing loads of video footage? Are you doing lots of production? Are you just going to be literally doing day-to-day -day admin work? Because once you've got those lists of positives and negatives in front of you, then you'll be able to figure out which is best for you. That being said, I think if I didn't have this 16 inch MacBook Pro right now, I think I'd go for an M1 Mac, probably. 
I'm not quite sure because the even newer ones are going to be coming out soon like the 14 inch and the 16 inch and they're just going to be even more powerful in the M1 Max. Apple are pretty much rewriting what is possible with computing right now and it's insane and I don't really know what to say about it. I don't really know much about all the technical aspects and all of that, but anything that makes creating easier, I think Apple are doing that right now with their M1 chips. And it might take a little bit of a while for everything to become compatible, such as plugins and different pieces of software. But I think overall, what Apple are doing right now is hugely exciting for anything creative. And I can't wait to see what the new M1, M1X, M2 chips that are going in the next laptops, whatever they decide to call them, I can't wait to see what they'll be able to do because again, it will just be on another level to what the M1s can do. I think the thing that gets me the most about it all is the price because they are insanely powerful for almost half, if not more than half the price of these. That bends my mind. So yeah, there's a few reasons as to why I regret and don't regret buying the MacBook Pro 16 inch. Overall, I'm still pretty happy that I have the MacBook Pro 16 inch and I plan on using it for a long time to come. So yeah, that's it for this video. If you wouldn't mind clicking that little like button and subscribe if you like what you see on this channel, come and be a part of this community and I shall see you all very soon in another video.